There are few things more precious than your own memories. After all, they serve as the building blocks of your identity. But scientists in the U.S. and here in Canada have found a way to delete select memories from the brains of snails. And now they want to begin using the same treatment on humans. Joining us to explain more from New York is Professor of Neuroscience at the Columbia University Medical Center, Sam Shaker. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you for having me. Please explain to us, Professor, how this works. Well, we used um, a, a simple approach of neurons and culture, and we designed experiments to test whether the memories stored within those neurons can actually be reversed. Uh, I'm just going to show you a, a, an image of, of what that looks like. So the uh, cell marked in red is the target neuron, and there are two other sensory neurons that are small uh, on the top and on the bottom. And each of these neurons receive different stimuli to simulate different types of memories. And I'll just use an example of that. Uh, one of the neurons received the following kind of memory. Uh, you're walking in the street, and you have to get from place A to place B. Um, you happen to notice um, a mailbox. Um, and then you notice a dark alley that you can use a shortcut. You then take the dark alley and um, get mugged in that dark alley. So each of these sensory neurons then is stimulated to simulate that paradigm. One of the neurons is stimulated for dark alley. The other uh, neuron is stimulated for mailbox. Then every, every cell receives the stimulus for the mugging. Um, as a result of this type of activity, um, each of the connections, the synapses formed by each of these inputs is changed as a result of the experience. Both of the synaptic connections between the sensory neurons and the target neuron um, increase in strength. And the duration of that increase is the correlate of the, uh, the memory that's being encoded. So one of these inputs is storing the memory for uh, the dark alley and the mugging. And the other one is the incidental memory of the mailbox and the mugging. Um, can we selectively erase each of these synaptic memories? So what we then did was, um, uh, my colleague and I at the Montreal Neurological Institute at McGill University, Wayne Sassen's lab, he and his colleagues developed uh, probes where we can selectively erase, um, uh, selectively target, that, that is, specific molecules within um, uh, the indicated red uh, nerve cell. Um, by injecting it with a specific molecule, we can interfere with the activity of different types of molecules. And what we found was when you interfered with one group of molecules, the memory associated with this input um, was erased without affecting this one. If we then targeted a different set of molecules, the opposite occurred. We can erase the synaptic memory of this input, leaving this one intact. This is so fascinating, this then Professor. But I'm curious, and my understanding is that you tested this out on snails. So, you know, the examples you gave us would be applicable to humans, but how can you determine a snail's memories and whether or not you're uh, effectively erasing them? Well, as I said, the change in the strength of the synapse is a, uh, a well-known mechanism in the storage of memories, both in our brains as well as in the brains of other animals. And that is a, a process that's conserved across evolution. Um, what's, uh, what's encouraging to us is that the molecules that we targeted were, in fact, the same types of molecules that are also expressed in our brains. Um, these are specific enzymes or molecules that protect those enzymes from being broken down. Those same molecules are expressed in the brain of a mouse, which is another model system that's used to study uh, the storage of memory, as well as in higher animals, including us. So we're encouraged by the fact that the same molecules and the same types of processes in storing information in the brains of, uh, of other animals are the same processes that take place in our brains. So yes, we're using a snail, but it's just a model system to uh, prove a principle, which is that we can selectively erase synaptic memories um, and leave others intact. 
Professor, I mean, the applications for this, uh, there's lots of them. One of them suggested is for soldiers with PTSD. How long until we see this tested on humans? Well, of course, that, um, in fact, it's now being tested as we speak in a in, in variety of, of phase three types of trials. This, this approach is, of course, important, uh, but it'll take quite a long time to develop a catalog of molecules that we can selectively target. So what, what our experiments demonstrated was a proof of principle that, in fact, it can be done. The next step is to identify specific types of molecules that are more easily targeted um, with specific drugs, both drugs that are currently available as well as drugs that need to be developed. And the, the strategy would be something like recalling, having the, the individual recall that specific memory that they're being anxious with uh, at the same time as administering the drug. And that with time, the association, the negative association between that stimulus, say the mailbox, and the anxiety that it might produce can then be eliminated. This, this is... will not, however, erase, will not, however, erase the... Um, the, uh, the experience themselves. It'll just be the negative associations that will I, be erased. I wish we had more time to discuss more about this. It is fascinating. Thank you for bringing this to us, Professor. Thank you very much for having me.